I don't think that's mom. How old do you think I am? You think this woman is my contemporary? I know it can be hard to take. Strokes can really age people. No, this is, this is literally not her. Who is this woman? What kind of a hospital are y'all running up here? Are you sure this is not? Yes, we are sure. We are here with Carol Carter. You know who this lady looks like, though? Dionne Warwick. I was thinking Stevie's mama. You, you know, remember Stevie with, with the throat lumps? Maybe we should get this sorted out somewhere. Welcome back to Insecurity, the official recap podcast for HBO's Insecure. I'm Crystal. Burr, 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 burr. And I'm Hey Friend, Hey. Back. That's right, girl. Yeah, it's episode it. five. We are halfway through the last season, friend. How? I don't how? know. We're already so fast. here. Mm-hmm. It's so good, though. I like how they're doing this. Like, everyone's kind of getting their time yeah. to shine, their storyline, everything's getting tied up. It is. We are surviving this week, and we're starting off with Molly, who is busy riding some nigga's face. Um, (laughs) I was just like, yes, just start us off, just right off top with what we need in this life. Got this nigga spelling her name wrong and all that, but (laughs) And didn't even care. That's how you know it was good. She said, I'll change change it. it. That's fine, yeah. (laughs) Mally sounds incredible, you know? The nigga still gets the job done, so... Not Mally, that's all. <laughs> that's all that really matters. So, you know, when she's uh, enjoying her little bit of afterglow, she notices, like, hella texts and missed calls showing up on her phone, and that's, always that's the never worst. good. Can't even bust a nut in peace. Right. Oh, boy was trying to talk, and she was like, stop talking for me? <laughs> I was like, Yes! <laughs> That part that so too. Funny. I was like, ooh, okay. It's a different side of Molly. Shut up real quick, Dick. <laughs> right. She would have never said that to no man before. Look at my girl growing never. up. Never. And can right. I just say I thought it was gonna be what was homeboy's name from last episode? Arik? What was his name? The one oh, from Arik. the beach? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, oh, so so it's it's not Arik. Okay, Molly. Yeah. On to the next. And I love that. Here for it. She's having fun. Normally, let Molly have one day and she'll start planning her fucking wedding child, but she's taking it nice slow. and slow, mm-hmm. going out, seeing what's out there for her. Unfortunately, this is very bad news. Her mother has had a stroke. She's in the hospital. Her whole family is Man. there waiting. Yeah, her brother is sick because the last thing he said was that they mama's dressing wasn't hitting this last time, you know. <laughs> It wasn't as good like, as it why normally did is. I say that I could have waited. She didn't have I to just, know, <laughs> right? Like I didn't have to say that. I could have just, you know, that's, I'm devastated about this right now. But um, things don't get better when the doctor comes in and tells the family to prepare to say their goodbyes, which I felt said, no, so wait. sudden. I was like, hold on, wait, what has happened? Zero to a fucking hundred here. <laughs> okay. So the doctor leads them to a room but that is not carol carter in the fucking bed <laughs> and the whole family is just like i just bitch are you <laughs> kidding <laughs> and then he tried to be like you know strokes can change someone's appearance bitch, and age no them. that Mm-mm. is not our mother <laughs> that is not Ain't no stroke appearance job oh no, my god this, this lovely scene. Elderly, light-skinned woman is not my mama, and I am completely (laughs) sure about it. Now, this patient's family actually does appear weird, confusing mistake. Turns out that Molly's mother is stable, but not conscious. Um, Right. But, you know. And I wonder, too, in this moment, does that mean that they told the other family that their mom was stable when she wasn't? Because that's even worse. That's it even is. worse because you saw how they came in kind of looking distraught yeah. and confused. I was like, oh, my God, I would rather the way Molly's family heard it because yeah. at least they have something to look forward to. But this poor family, what a doctor. Right. Only right. on Insecure like- would they take you up and <laughs> drop you. just Because <laughs> this is not I'm so sorry. Doctors and nurses, other hospital staff, they usually, you know, are pretty sure about who they are talking to. I mean, this to, is but... kind of serious. <laughs> right. <laughs> but anyway, the nurse is asking a few basic questions about Molly's mama's health. And uh, her dad is stressed and really can't handle the rapid fire right then. So, of course, Molly vol- so. Yeah. So, of course, Molly volunteers herself to be a point of contact says that her dad can't handle it but she can deal with it and i thought are you sure sister 
Strong Are you sure? friend again. Strong friend. The lies Child. we tell ourselves. I got it. We, I can do mm, it. Mm, we'll see, girl. Okay. Meanwhile. And the nurse, I appreciated that the nurse didn't even take it personal <laughs> when the dad was snapping. Oh, she no. was like, I get it. You know, I know how it is. She just walked off calmly. I'm sure they see that sort of thing all the time, right? They see people at their worst very frequently. So Mm -hmm. while Molly is dealing with this news, Issa is over at Nathan's. Nathan walks in the room (laughs) with his dick jangling around like a bowl of jello. I said, this is what we're doing? Relatable content. (laughs) Bringing coffee in your underwear. That's how we like our mornings around here. (laughs) So both of... (laughs) Both of their schedules got delayed for the day. And oh, nice. Issa, yeah, you know, you can tell that at first she's getting kind of excited. Like, oh, yeah, we'll hang out, blah, blah, blah. And then she's like, oh, I mean, do you want some me time? Like, do you want to be alone? Because I know we said we were going to. Because she's like, let me yeah. not get too hyped. <laughs> she was back. getting all excited. Right. And <laughs> the way he was looking at her had her completely considering being like, you know, I was supposed to go to lunch with Molly, but she be canceling all the time. That, be, that bitch be at work. And I'm cool yeah. with it today. <laughs> yeah. And they was going to take that reservation and go on their little date. But when she called Molly, who, you know, she thought was reading a book with her reading ass, um, <laughs> she, of course, learns this terrible news. So. Right. Oh, yeah. man. Nathan Nathan is being a good little boyfriend, dropping Issa off at the hospital. So and cute. Even offers to come back later to pick her up, but she doesn't really want to monopolize his day. And he says, you know what, Issa, just call me, just text me, whatever you need, I'm here. Like, reassuring Ooh. her that I actually, <laughs> I like you and I want to be here. And yes, it's a pain in the ass to drive to the hospital multiple times in a day, but I will do that because right. I like you. Especially like, okay. in L.A. We know how that traffic gets listen, down. Listen, listen, because I would have been like, what you, I'll cash app you some uh, Lyft money. You know, I'll, 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 I'll call the do. Uber for you. Just let me know what address <laughs> right. to put in. <laughs> I'm not, not doing the rest of that. They were cute, though. They were. Molly's Aunt Kiki is doing that old black people thing where they be like, <coughs> I'm feeling a tickle. And it's when she did her different coughs and was like, you think it's cancer? Oh, hypochondriacs. <laughs> we all have that two or three in the family. Right. But Molly is updating Issa on her mom, her family. Her brother keeps recounting this same 79 cents. And Issa, being a good friend, says, okay, but what do you need? Love and that part. Mm-hmm. So Molly, good. who is in caretaker mode, can't think of a single thing. And I'm like, really? You feel comfortable in this outfit you have on? Because you came straight from getting your pussy ate to the <laughs> hospital in this same dress that I'm assuming you wore on your date. And so <laughs> it's it like was not funny to be watching her too obvious. in the hospital right. with this damn leg thigh high cut. <laughs> right. Like, girl, we can see your hip and you can't it's think of nothing you morning. might need. <laughs> So Issa <laughs> offers to go by Molly's apartment, get her some other clothes, and even to switch outfits right then, even though Molly is a looking friend. like she does not want to wear this block party sweatshirt and jeans. I wanted the block party sweatshirt low key. Of course like, you we, do. Of course you do. How can I Just get a one? Neck. <laughs> <laughs> Cute though. It's so crazy because I wondered while they were changing clothes if Issa knew that Molly's pussy juice was all over that dress. <laughs> but turns out Issa also fucked in her outfit. So And she said, I too have pussy juice on my outfit. <laughs> look at us. <laughs> Just yeah. look at us. <laughs> yeah, but they have this moment while they, when they're um, changing clothes where Molly is just like, Super appreciative of Issa for being there, for supporting her through this. And it is so nice to see these two in like a loving, giving, yes. mutually beneficial, supportive Come on. space. It's Come been so on. long. Last season was so difficult. Um, and Princess said something on Twitter a couple of weeks ago about how they just wanted Molly and Issa to do more of what they didn't do last season, which was talk. Like mm. y'all are actually communicating now and we see the fruits of these efforts. Like this is Come just a beautiful on. moment. Yeah. <laughs> it is nice, especially on Molly's end. Sorry, Molly fans, but it's nice to see her. No, you're, just... you're right and you should say it. <laughs> yeah. Well, I know you're the president of this you know uh, it. campaign. You know it. But she <laughs> you know it. it was nice for once 
granted, this is about her mom, so she's in a completely different headspace, but it was nice mm-hmm. for her to just be present in their friendship in that moment, which I feel like she's had a hard time doing. So I do like, I appreciate that growth. And like you said, it's mm-hmm. just finally, it's a transfer of energy. They're both looking out for each other in a really healthy, right. beautiful way. And we love to see it. Mm-hmm. We do. So Nathan came back to pick Issa up again. Incredible boyfriend for <laughs> doing <Yes>. this already. <laughs> um, she thought somebody gave her a compliment that somebody happened to be, you know, delusional. <laughs> but she was feeling herself. Issa She's does like, oh, look damn oh, good. Okay. <laughs> yeah. And I love that both of them called their mamas after hearing about what happened. Which happens because to... <laughs> we mainly don't call our mamas. So sometimes it takes something to happen mm. for you to be like, oh, let me check as in. As crazy as that is. Yeah, mm-hmm. but <laughs> happens. Uh, so that is, yeah, that's cute. They head over to Molly's place to pick up <laughs> what Issa calls hospital chic. And Nathan is actually the one who notices Flavor Flav, like this nigga ain't got no food, no water, and he's just how like, sad. Oh, yeah. That she didn't thing, even look oh, yeah, over. Did you see how dog. she walked no. over to the kitchen, like, oh, <laughs> true. <laughs> she said, oh yeah, dog. yeah. She she let her dog. <laughs> <laughs> Issa has no interest in the dog at all, but after Nathan judges her, they decide to take that little nigga for a walk. Like, come on, girl. He you said can't just she was going to leave you to die. And the dog <laughs> just followed him out. Yeah. <laughs> that was so sad. Nathan, Christ. it is something about Nathan's voice. Woo. Like, mm-hmm. I know I'm country, so maybe it's just, you know, mm-hmm. this reminds me so much of home <laughs> and where I come from, but. Same, same. Well, just does something I'm not right country, but i like it <laughs> right but it's <laughs> it's something about that little accent mm-hmm. but before we get to the dog walk back at the hospital aunt kiki is you know doing that thing fielding calls from different family members when somebody is sick all of a sudden you have a trillion people calling mm-hmm. trying to pray on speakerphone and all this um <laughs> and molly is surprised to learn that her parents never finished their estate planning like she told them to like she'd been on their neck about and now look what happened this right. is exactly like, why you should have these systems this... in place because you never <laughs> know when shit yes, is going friend. to go down so she looked at her dad exactly. and it was tough because you know this is not the time for her to come mm-hmm. down on him, but she gave him that right. look like, I told you. Mm-hmm. I told and you. she was just about to start fussing. Mm-hmm. Like, this is mm-hmm. prime Real opportunity for Molly to start fussing. But she gets a call from Torian at work about the proposal that they're supposed to present at the retreat. Molly needs more time. If you'll remember, I think it was the first episode of the season, Molly volunteered to work on this, um, but she needs mm-hmm. more time now. And Torian is like, you know, if you're busy, I know you have this personal mis- uh, issue going on. Felicia can handle it. But Molly's like, no, 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 I can do it. Just let me know when you need it. And I thought, ah, this is a perfect opportunity <laughs> to just take the help. Are you coming in today? No, I can't. I told my assistant I was handling some personal stuff. Oh. Well, did you get a chance to finish your section of the rebranding proposal? Malcolm wants to hear it all before we present at the retreat. Yeah, I was uh, I was actually gonna work on that today. I just need a little bit more time. Felicia is still available to take this on if you can't. I just need to know sooner than later. This is a big deal to them. No, I I, I can do it. Just is she not us though? Me, I feel like me and you suffer from this. <laughs> You we know, be going through some things and still doing our work and pushing through okay. as if nothing is happening. Perhaps you haven't lied, but also <laughs> <laughs> nobody calls me and is like, hey, girl, can I record your podcast for you this week? Can I do oh, your yeah, homework? No. Can There's I? No like, that doesn't saying, happen either. We have a backup right? in case you can't yeah, do no. it. But There's did never you wonder, that. though, why Molly didn't just tell Torian what was happening so he could gain some insight no. into what she's busy about? Because I'm sure he wouldn't even have been as pushy and he would have been like, listen, Molly, right. please tend to your mother who just had a stroke and let right. Felicia handle this. But I know she yes. just doesn't want to not be a part of this big proposal. I exactly. get it. Exactly. But Molly, girl, it's family. Right. I feel like that's exactly why she didn't say. She knew that if she told him that her mama had a stroke, that Torian would insist and be like, of course. girl, 
Absolutely Please, not. Fall Felicia's back. helping. I don't want to hear nothing else about it. End of story. Leave it alone. But no, mm-hmm. Molly got to be Superwoman. I understand. Mm-hmm. But sister, Same. learn how to take the help. Take the help. <sighs> well, Nathan and Issa are walking Flavor Flav when Issa's mama <laughs> FaceTimes her. <laughs> <laughs> this entire scene. I was like, Issa Too needs to get real. out of my life. <laughs> it was. <laughs> right? I was like, wow, this is all of us with our mom. Because <laughs> so. at first it's like, oh, mommy, I love you. I love you too. Oh, mm, that emotional okay, what you doing like, for the next oh. two months? <laughs> <laughs> you only it only lasts thirty seconds, and then you're like, oh right. yeah, this is why we don't talk. Anymore. This is why <laughs> I only talk to you twice a month, girl. This is exactly why. Because now oh, you're talking about people <laughs> joining your Christian book club and reading Turned Away at the Gate. <laughs> Nathan talking like, about, I mean, I do want to know what happens at the gate. <laughs> <laughs> no. Do you know why this pissed me off so bad? Because when I was in high school, there was a very popular Christian book series that came out. And <laughs> the ladies at my church had a book club for it. Come and on, I was like book the, club. And I was like the only person under 40 <gasps> who was, was in this book club. Oh, yes. my, and this was by choice. I know this yes. was by choice. <laughs> I was like, and I was excited (laughs) to be there. Okay. (laughs) Issa is nowhere near as excited. She keeps looking off to the side. And so, of course, Mama clocks that and wants to know who she's looking at. And, you know, as soon as she called him over, Nathan came right on into the shot. Come on, Issa's mama. (laughs) Okay. Because Mama said, Oh, are you my daughter's boyfriend? He said, Sure am. Yes. Oh. No hesitation, oh, too. Right. Yes. Mm-hmm. Steph Curry with it. Of course, Issa snatches the phone back <laughs> and hangs up after Miss D asks for Nathan's number. Talking about, she don't call me. Okay. And you're not finna call him. Which so let me was just go honestly ahead. so funny because anyone, <laughs> yes, everyone yes. knows that my mom yes. will call my partner in a heartbeat if I don't even answer for two rings. His phone oh, they is BFFs. already ringing. They beat F. F's. <laughs> so damn funny. <laughs> right. But um, Issa, so of course Issa talks to Nathan about, you know, this boyfriend situation. And it's like, you know, you really didn't have to do all that because my mama is doing the most. But it does not feel too soon to Nathan at all. He's giving her I googly love eyes. Intention. Right. Okay, he said, I know what I said, and I meant mm-hmm. what I said. And I, we go and together. I, I meant that shit. Yeah, we do. Mm-hmm. You mind. <laughs> you mind. Uh, so they're walking the dog, and Issa starts talking about how her mom and Stanley must be going through a rough patch, and how her mom just needs to get her shit together, figure out what she wants. And I thought, oh, okay, that must be hereditary. Ooh. Who else needs to sit down somewhere An and apple. figure out what it is they want? Mm. <laughs> An apple in a tree. <laughs> Listen, and Nathan is over here, like, very politely trying to mm-hmm. not state the extremely obvious. Okay. And, a boyfriend. <laughs> right. <laughs> Already knowing his place. It's your job. It's your job. Have you read Turned Away at the Gate? It's a Christian series. They say it takes a while to get into, but once they get to the gate, <laughs> that's when it really picks up. Okay. Um... No, I wait, wait, wait. Who you with? Huh? Who you keep looking at? Who you with? Oh, that's that's Nathan. Nathan? Who is Nathan? Hey Nathan! <laughs> hey Miss D. Oh. Are you my daughter's boyfriend? Mom. Uh yeah, I am. Okay, well come on over here and let me get a better look at you. Ethan, pass the phone to Nathan. Oh, you deserve it. <laughs> Oh, Nathan, look, I'm gonna need your phone number, okay? Because Lord knows Ethan never picks up when I call. Mom, I, I called you. You know what? We're gonna end this Wait. now. Love you. Wait, bye. You didn't tell me what time I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, I'm really sorry about that. <laughs> it's all good. You know, it's kind of sweet. Do you know you didn't have to? If it feels too soon. What? The boyfriend thing? Nah. And while they are doing this, Flavor Flav sneaks right out of that collar and runs his ass off. I said, oh, no, Issa, you were supposed to pick up an outfit and leave. 
And it's the that fact that they it. were so into this conversation with each other mm-hmm. that they did not that they did not notice this. A whole dog walked off right. from them and so and got funny. far. That nigga got far. <laughs> <laughs> How is he not just right down the street? What? No, nope. he was Child. over it. <laughs> Well, Flavor Flav is off on his own mission back at the <laughs> hospital. <laughs> Molly's brother is just distraught, child, whispering in their mama ear about how she used the perfect amount of paprika. And oh, my goodness. Wasn't too much or too little mama. It was perfect. He ain't letting and, us go. <laughs> right. And Molly is being that person who has a cough and then goes on WebMD and asks the doctors and the nurses about every possible illness that this could be related to and even the nurse is like oh, okay so you much them. relatable content on this show i'm sorry y'all. <laughs> <laughs> i'm like is that is this me again and this seems right like- <laughs> so the nurse is like you know i get that so you're one of those you you got mm-hmm. your medical Am. degree from google um <laughs> and i'm happy for you but the doppler isn't an option anyway because carol has had a stroke before and molly's like oh no she hasn't and her daddy has to be like um well actually <sighs> as soon as molly said no she hasn't i literally i said oh saw. no before the dad even came into the screen i was like he's about to turn around and hit mm-hmm. her with the action Actually, and right. did. Mm. Yeah, and did. I get it. We we have to double check with this hospital because they <laughs> are clearly I mean, not always right. clearly <laughs> giving us the right up. information, mm-hmm. right? <laughs> um, but yeah, Issa, or Issa, Molly's mother has had a stroke before. She didn't want them to know anything about it. So her dad never said anything. Aunt Kiki is over there just having a fit child talking about the Lord trying to call Carol home. Golly. Molly... Molly is so pissed at her father in this moment, completely understandable um, to me. But she also says that she can't help them if they keep pretending everything is fine, which is true. Hmm. But just like Issa, Molly is preaching a message that she needs to internalize. (laughs) I said, so both of y'all. I love this. (laughs) I I did too. I really did. Both of y'all are in a place where you can accurately perceive what other people are doing and Mm. identify what they need to fix or change and the thing that you are talking about is the exact same thing Mm -hmm. that you need to apply Mm -hmm. to your own life preach Mm. preacher preach preacher dr crystal (laughs) <laughs> I'm sure Molly is not thinking about that right now. She's pretty pissed about everything going on. She would be more pissed if she knew that her dog was missing. Oh, but my God. I was just praying that they didn't have to add too. this on to me everything Me too. Happening. I said, oh, God, Jesus. they're never going to speak again. I said, please, if Flavor Flav dies, they will never speak again. <laughs> oh, my God. And shit right. just got right, too. And Issa's even saying, like, I cannot believe that I lost my friend's dog while her mom is in the hospital. But Nathan, being a good boyfriend, is being very reassuring you know suggest that they should trace their steps back to molly's place he knows a lot about dogs because he had one when he was a kid he knows how stressful it is when them niggas get loose but the worst part of this story is that his daddy told him if anybody fuck with you and you let them fuck with you i'm gonna fuck you up worse which is which is very common sad to say (laughs) right so many of our parents say shit like that but I do right. like that we're getting insight into Nathan in every into episode Nathan. he's in. You yeah. notice like little bits and pieces are coming out. Mm-hmm. So I feel like, okay, okay, more threads right. with Nathan yeah. and him opening up to Issa, which is super cool. That is just really a horrible thing to tell children. Like, if somebody does you wrong, I'm going to do you even wronger so that right. you learn what? Not to trust nobody? That is some thanks horrible shit making, to do to your children. Thanks for making my home safe, Dad. <laughs> right. <laughs> Thanks for letting me know that I can't tell you when I'm in trouble or when something has gone wrong because you're going to beat my ass. What? Man, I'm Please, please stop traumatizing your children with that bullshit. But (laughs) Nathan, thankfully, Nathan's dog was on the porch when they got back to the house, you know, when he was a kid. And so Issa's like, hmm, interesting, because I'm definitely going to blame you if we don't find (laughs) Mr. Flav. (laughs) And so cute. That honestly felt really valid to me because Issa didn't want to take that nigga out in the first place, okay? Remember when he was like, you want to walk him? He got it. She was like, you got it? (laughs) He got... No. Not the indoor dog got it. (laughs) He knows Issa was like, "Mm -mm, it's a puppy pad around here somewhere. He'd be all right. (laughs) She was not trying to hear that shit. Oh, God, Issa. 
But the fact that this scene ended with them joking made me feel like it's going to be okay. Like It is. It is. It's going to be fine. Right. Molly is alone in her mother's room at the hospital when the doctor comes in and breaks the awful news that we are looking at possible paralysis in Carol's situation. The stroke was pretty bad and he offers to... Yeah, come. he offers to come back and tell the rest of the family. But again, Molly, deciding that she can handle anything and everything, says that she'll take it in. And as soon as the doctor leaves, here they come. And now and you actually got to say it. And yeah, you he saw did. his face. As soon as he saw mm-hmm. Molly's face, he read it yep. all. He That's why he was like, he did. what did the doctor say? Because you're telling me everything without saying a word. Right. And that is horrifying. Like I would not, to not even be the know fear of that type of news Mm-mm. either. But to not even know that your mother had a stroke before to now getting right. this awful news, rushing to the hospital and everything, finding out that they didn't complete the estate planning that you told them to do when they were mm. both, you know, conscious and standing upright. And all this additional pressure from work, this stress of trying to get this done and not falter in a professional way. It's just like, this is a lot for Molly to be taken on. And now looking at her mother possibly being paralyzed. It's like, Christ, how much stress can one person take in like a very short amount of time? It's just been back to back difficult things to swallow here. So Molly is really going to need her people. She is going to need her circle. I mean, like you said, it it's a lot and it's hitting on every cylinder in her life, mm-hmm. the pressure. Yeah. So relatable man right huh meanwhile nathan and Issa are sitting in front of molly's building talking about it ain't no way flavor flav can leave because he got better amenities than Issa do real (laughs) (laughs) and this bitch is scrolling on her phone looking for a replacement dog i screamed (laughs) not nathan some shit i would do that's some shit i would do Like, Molly not going to notice. <laughs> like, no feelings for this dog. Issa too but crazy. But also, knowing Molly, Flavor Flav is probably microchipped. And <laughs> if he was lost, she could probably track his ass down. True. But True. That won't be necessary because Flavor Flav runs right up, right hey! then. Issa. <laughs> He's just like Nathan predicted. Thank the Lord. Yes. Issa calling him an idiot dog, talking about, I did not know... <laughs> Your dumbass would come back, but, <laughs> you know, obviously very happy, very relieved, and very grateful to Nathan. You know, he held her down throughout this day. She couldn't have done it without I him. Why. I was like, there's no way this idiot dog is going to retrace his steps, but here you are. You did it. You're not dumb. Smarter than you gave him credit for. Oh, he is. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I honestly could not have done today without you. You're so patient with me. That's why I love you. Now, friend. Now, uh, okay. friend. Okay. Uh-uh. Even Mm-mm. me, even me, I, I said, cringe. Oh, no, and you know girl. I'm the love bug out the crew, but I was you like. Are. But you know, Mm-mm. okay, okay. So here's the thing. Because I've been in a situation like this. <laughs> oh, and no, no, it wasn't. Okay. It wasn't me, though. I'll tell you that. But the person was just <laughs> saying <laughs> what they Princess, love. let's be clear. They're like, I love you for this thing, but it just comes out tricky, you know? She's like, yeah, I love no. you for that. It's not like, I love you. It's no, I she love said, you. that's why I love you. But don't you... Mm-mm, I feel like friend. I know how she meant it. <laughs> no. <laughs> but the crazy part is, like, it wasn't even a thing for Nathan. Yeah, no. Like, he looked at her have. like... That's exactly the what moment. I want to hear. Yeah. Ooh. They Ooh. kissed and looked all happy and wide open. You niggas. It feels said, sudden. Oh, uh-uh. it, it feels does. sudden. It because feels way too fast. When you really calculate the hours they've probably spent in totality. <laughs> right. But who are we, Crystal? Who are we to decide what people feel? We're the we're the hosts of the official <laughs> recap podcast <laughs> for the show. And I get, I really do get that Issa and Nathan, you know, bonded. They were really feeling each other before, you know, they separated. Live, and they, love, laugh. I mean, no, uh-uh. no, mm-mm. I get that they stayed in touch over the past year. They were still friends. So the feelings really didn't go anywhere. But I right. love you when y'all 
Like, what? He just said he was your boyfriend like an hour ago. You know, people are being paralyzed. A dog went missing. Uh-uh. You know, things, things. No. There's a baby. I mean, it's a lot of emotions, and and I get it. I get it. What happened to let's not take it too fast? What happened to <laughs> that? She literally said maybe forty five minutes prior. You know, like people y'all have the like right lesbians. to change their minds. Uh-uh. <laughs> y'all are acting like lesbians. <laughs> Like, y'all finna go home and pack up so one of you can move Get in the with U-Haul. the other. Get the U-Haul. Child. Before they can, before they can file a change of address form, Issa returns to the hospital. Wow, I'm just speaking my life. Says it was no problem at all to look after Flavor Flav. He's a great dog. Very super easy to uh, handle. And, so- of course... Molly is opening up to Issa about how upset she is. She kind of, um, she thinks that her mother didn't think that Molly was strong enough to handle the news of like her health. Like, Hmm. like maybe she didn't think Molly could, you know, handle that information or like maybe she didn't trust her, thought she was too weak. But Issa reminds Molly that she is an incredible person. Bitch, do you know you? You are doing so much right. You're smart as hell. You have a gorgeous apartment, a good job, and a really smart dog. You are doing a good job with him. Supremely intelligent. He does not use the microwave. Shit is gonna happen how and when it wants to, but all of this stuff is out of our control anyway. He right. I just, I just don't want to be out the loop. I with my family, you, Kelly or Tiff. Like y'all are all I got. I promise you gonna always be in my loop. This is the real love story of the series. It the is. real love story oh, I love is that these you're two. saying that because it is. It is. It is like the to see these two to see um, not just their history like when they first met in college and all that, but just over the past five seasons the way things started to fracture and deteriorate and then the way they have built it back up. Like this is a better love story than any of these couples um, on the show. And it's it's been done in a, in a very real way, you know, like it wasn't just like, we're back. It's like, there was a fraction. We were all sad about it. They were not fucking with each other. Like there's Mm -mm. a lot of work, like you said, that has gone into repairing this. So like, it's it's just so great to see it. I'm just happy for them. Oh. Yeah. And just like um, a romantic couple, Issa has <laughs> taken possession of Molly's outfit. Molly knows she ain't never going to get it back. I was like, okay. So that Which is cracked me up that she <laughs> went to Molly's house to get an outfit for herself. <laughs> I was like, wait a minute. How does this work? <laughs> I mean, you know, they were supposed to change back, but... <laughs> She was like, I need something too, you know. I'm actually going to be keeping this fly ass <laughs> two piece <laughs> suit situation, but thank so you so funny. much, girl. Right for that, Issa leaves to go get them some coffee. Um, and this final shot of Molly, you know, just looking at her mama, so worried, and then laying down on her legs was like really beautiful and really heartbreaking. Because who amongst mm-hmm. us has never been in a situation like that where you're just. You know, uh, especially if you're like Molly and you're kind of a control freak and you do everything you can to be prepared for things. There are just some things that are going to knock you on your ass and Mm -hmm. all you can do is submit and let it happen and handle it the best you can. But everything cannot be controlled. And yeah, she's just giving in. to me. Girl. Well, Issa is in the hospital corridor when she spots Condola, Eli, and Lawrence. What a trio. I said, no, now why would y'all do this to us? Because I thought the episode was ending (laughs) at Molly hugging on her mama. But of course, Mm -hmm. Insecure is going to insecure. Of course. So Issa's peeking around the corner, staring at this little adorable black family. And Lawrence spots her too, but both of them are just kind of stuck in this stare off. Like neither one of them can really speak. Neither one is making advances towards the it's other. It's stinging. And, it's stinging. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, but you know, Issa marches straight forward instead of saying anything. She's clearly hesitating though, like after she crosses 
the little corridor hallway situation. She's hesitating. Like she kind of wants to go back and say something. She doesn't know if she should, if she should, the doctor calls um, the family in, <laughs> you know, Condola and the Lawrence and family. their child. Right. And, <laughs> but, but before they, before they do, Lawrence is like also clearly very much like stuck Affected. off of the mm-hmm. fact that he just saw, right. The love of his life walk right on past him in an outfit that she can't afford. Like <laughs> he just so saw right it just shows that they both have a lot to process still and you know Issa's trying to move on already telling someone she loves him and then I'm like was it retrograde or something because for Lawrence to pop up (laughs) in that hallway just to give her a reminder of where she's actually at and what she might need to figure out first I mean because she was standing against that wall like it literally knocked her breath out Mm-hmm. Now, will she turn around and go speak? Bitch, we won't no. know today because the episode <laughs> ended right there. Perhaps we will find out next week. But mm. that is how season five, episode five of Insecure ended. Fran, I'm sick because, listen, I'm going to say this. <laughs> What's the prediction? If Issa breaks Nathan's heart, no, I will be so, I will be irate. Fran, I will be irate. I, I will be irate. <laughs> She about to do it, and I'm going to be so pissed off because you told this man you love him. And this will be round two because, remember, (laughs) she picked Lawrence over him before. She curved him. Right. She has done this already. So it's like, please. No, you said you love him. He is and your, he, he and remember that Nathan is the one who was trying to be chill. Like when she cried on him, he's the one right. that left and he kept it yep. with her later. Like, listen, I was just trying to respect the boundaries that you set. So for her right. to now tell him, I don't want boundaries. I actually want to be honest with you. I want to be with you. And then two hours later, I love you. Mm. <laughs> and then now <laughs> she's against the wall, about to wall slide over seeing Listen. Lawrence. It's just, it's a lot. And this is what happens when you don't take time to clear out mm-hmm. your demons of Christmas yeah. past. <laughs> Yes. And Girl. since Lawrence is at this midday doctor's appointment, I'm assuming that we were right. And he has moved back to L.A., mm-hmm. which you I'm called. assuming that I yep. think that Lawrence has moved back to L.A. Um, I think. I really don't want her to, but I think Issa is going to break Nathan's heart. I do. I don't want her to, but I think she will. But I do think that the next scene, maybe when we come back in next week's episode, I'm guessing she is going to have to talk to him in the hospital because she's going to bring back the coffee. You know, like, I don't know if they're going to start off with still being in the hospital, but I do wonder if they're going to cross paths. And that's where she'll realize through conversation that he's back in L.A. and that's going to set some shit on fire. So I definitely see that coming. Oh, see, I didn't even think. Think about it like that. Fuck. I think we're gonna, Fuck. that's where she's going to hear it from the horse's mouth. Oof. God. Well, but you know what? I am going to hold out hope that Issa sees how hard it is to be a new parent and decide she does not need that energy in her life. And she is just going to stay fair. with her Steph Curry. Where she's at. Mm-hmm. Right. You know, and, and you are happy. You like him. But, you know... Y'all and they understand each other. He's patient, like she said. And, I mean, um, <laughs> we. I just, I, I'm, I'm really, I'm a little scared about this friend because I don't know if she's gonna. I am too because <sighs> there's so many ways that this can go. But the reality is, no matter what, someone's gonna be hurt. That's just the game. That's true. That's true. And the reality is that sometimes there is just that one person where if things were different. Y'all would have been together. Mm-hmm. Oh, and when girl. you see them, you always that that pull always is always gonna it. be there. Yeah, doesn't mean you have to act on it, but it does mean that you might always wonder what if. Mm-hmm. So, especially because it didn't see. end. It didn't end in <laughs> hatred. It didn't end in anger. And like right. we said a couple episodes back, sometimes anger and hatred can be easier fuel to get past. But this, oh, definitely, this is gonna be a challenge. We'll see what happens. Oh man! And as far as Molly, hmm, mm. I think Molly is going to get in trouble for falling short at work. I don't think Agreed. there's any way that she is gonna get this done on time. Mm-hmm. Um, and the fact that she couldn't 
And it's not even because she didn't get it done. It's because she couldn't admit that she can't handle everything. Literally what I was thinking. Yeah, like she could not be vulnerable enough to say, hey, I'm not going to be able to do this. I'm really struggling right now, going through a lot. And so, yeah, tell Felicia that, you know, she's welcome to do it. Right. And Torian was like, you know, this can happen. Just let me know. So See, that we I, have time. I actually, I'm going to go ahead and give Molly a little bit of credit. I think that she, this thing with her mom is going to be a heart softener for her. And remember, okay. we've been saying that this whole season, or at least I was saying, I feel like this is a um, an undoing of everything mm. that she's created for herself and of herself. And so I think that that scene where we saw her leaning on her mom Mm-hmm. it symbolizes to me that she's going to call Torian. I really feel that. And she's going to tell him, listen, I can't do well, this yeah. actually. Yeah. Like, I okay. think she's actually going to call him and tell him straight up instead of like waiting for shit to drop and messing everything mm-hmm. up. She's going to realize I actually can't do it all. And I'm not the strong person. There's going to be days right. where I'm not. And I think the way she personalized her mom not telling her about the stroke, it it mirrored her too, where it was less about yep. her mom thinking she wasn't strong enough to hear it and more about the mom thinking she was strong enough to deal with it on her own, which is Molly as well. Right. I mean, and that's Molly's perception of why her mother didn't tell her. I right. actually she think personalized it. It doesn't make a lot of sense to me that Molly's mother would feel that way because everybody knows that Molly is incredible. Like, right? <laughs> everybody She's knows that straight right, laced, if anybody yeah, can juggle control, everything, it'd be her. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> if anybody can, you know, keep up the balancing act, it would be Molly. So if she does do that, I hope she does. That would be incredible. Mm-hmm. I would be like, nah. No, where is Dr. That's Rhonda? Girl, Somebody need this. Somebody put me <laughs> on Dr. Rhonda payroll. need a raise. <laughs> <laughs> I really hope we see that. I really, for yeah. Molly's sake, hope that this is where she surrenders to this life, this restricted mm-hmm. life that she's created for herself because she can't you know, breathe. I hope she does. I hope she calls soon, like within 24 yes, hours. Yes, like from the hospital. She's like, <laughs> yeah, right now, actually. <laughs> because in the bed. I thought she was going to text Issa and be like, can you grab my laptop and my charger so I can get this work done here at but the I hospital? But I can see that, too. So. <laughs> well, but see, she didn't. She did not mm. ask Issa to bring her laptop. It's like she said that to Torian, and then she immediately went back to fixating on her mama. So right. I hope I didn't way. think of that. I hope you're right about that. I hope she does. I hope she's like, look, I'm going to email you and Felicia everything I've done so far. And I'm taking a leave of absence to take care of my mama. There we go. A radical sabbatical. Yes, yes. (laughs) I hope she does. But, you know, I guess, girl, we'll find out in the second half of this last season. Ah! so insecure. much to unwrap still five oh, episodes man. left this is good i'm in i am in. yes so please please join the conversation on social media let us know your thoughts using hashtag insecurity y'all are cracking me up oh my god listen <laughs> <laughs> the yeah, commentary no. makes the show literally it is it really is so much the way y'all <laughs> The way y'all be co-signing friends, ridiculous conspiracy theories my and peoples. adding on to that shit. My people. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> yes, make sure you are joining the conversation online. Make sure you are tuning in every Sunday night at 10 p.m. on HBO for new episodes of Insecure. Fran, anything else for the people before we wrap up? Just don't forget to check us out immediately following after the episode because we will be here every week Mm -hmm. with our breakdown. That's right. Streaming on your favorite podcast platforms. And on that note, we'll be back next week. Bye. Girl, if she break Nathan's heart, I'll be so mad. Insecurity is a Loudspeakers Studios production in association with Team Epiphany. We're your hosts, Crystal and Fran. The executive producers are Chris Morrow and Matt Raz. The producer is Matt Raz. Our associate producer and editor is Tyrell Worley. And the show is engineered by Dwayne Crawford. Don't forget to subscribe to Insecurity wherever you get your podcasts. Or check HBO Max to hear the latest episodes as soon as they drop. Burr, 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 burr. <laughs> <laughs>